We knew it was coming, but the decision by the Labour Party to upgrade its level of recognition of a state of Palestine still leaves a very nasty taste in the mouths of Jewish voters who care about Israel. For years, Labour people have repeatedly tried to reassure us that there was nothing to worry about, that the ALP was still very strong in its support of Israel, even though it, like all our other communal organisations, is wedded to the two-state delusion. Well, the events of, of their recent conference have blown this concept right out of the water. By formalising the next Labour government to unilaterally recognise the state of Palestine, the ALP has shown itself to be firmly in the anti-Israel camp, and no amount of spin and whitewashing will convince me otherwise. It raises all sorts of questions that will prove difficult for any decent political party to answer. Questions such as, why reward the Palestinian Authority for refusing all negotiations with Israel over many years, in contravention of the Oslo Accords? Which borders of this state are they recognising? Judea? Samaria? If so, what's going to happen to the thousands of Israeli Jews living on, quote, the wrong side of the Green Line? Will they recognise Gaza as part of this crazy state? You know, the regime that has launched hundreds of rockets and firebombs at Israel because it refuses to accept a Jewish Israel in any shape or form in its current location. This same regime that tortures its dissidents, oppresses women and throws gays off rooftops. Is the ALP happy to look the other way at the anti-Semitic jihadist nature of the Palestinian Authority? The regime that brainwashes its children to become martyrs when they grow up and incites terrorist attacks against Jewish Israelis. And the big question is, what about the pay for slay program? Is the ALP really happy to support a movement that pays a stipend to the families of terrorists who have been convicted in jail in Israel for successful terror attacks? You have to wonder what sort of brain fade the ALP activists had by pushing this idiotic notion into becoming formal policy. How can they possibly claim any authority in foreign affairs by openly supporting a movement that violates human rights on so many levels? And where is the criticism from decent people within the party? Only two ex-MPs have spoken up. Michael Danby has been the main voice exposing all this hypocrisy, but he is now outside the circle by virtue of his retirement. Stephen Conroy is further removed from the Labour Party elite. But he also had the decency to criticise this move and stand up for both Australian and Jewish values. And to make matters worse, when Danby tried to speak at the conference by proposing some conditions to balance the motion, he was barred from doing so. Censored. Cancelled. What about all those lefty buzzwords like justice, inclusiveness, equality? They've all gone straight out the window. But such hypocrisy from the left is unfortunately nothing unusual. Meanwhile, not a word from Jewish MP Mark Dreyfus, who never ever stands up for Israel. And local member Josh Burns couldn't think of anything better to say than spouting the mantra that nothing has changed. Well, it has, mate, as Michael Danby pointed out. Elevating the issue from a resolution to platform policy is a big step. Burns, in particular, is a lightweight on Jewish issues and could learn a lot from Michael Danby, but we know he hasn't bothered to ask. He has now forfeited any right to court the Jewish vote whenever the next election comes around. Shadow Foreign Affairs Minister Penny Wong has droned on and on about Labour's support of Israel, but she was instrumental in this resolution and she also has now lost her credibility on Israel. In the past, with leaders like Bob Hawke and Paul Keating, for example, the Labour Party was once a reasonable left-of-centre alternative for those who were uncomfortable with more conservative political views. But not anymore. Led by Anthony Albanese, it's now in a race to the left by foolishly trying to out-green the Greens. It also seems to me that the ALP has been seduced by a growing Islamic demographic, and are clearly no longer ashamed 
to dump Israel for the Muslim vote. Let's face it, all principle has been thrown out the window and it's purely a numbers game now. And there are a lot more Muslims in Australia's working class than Jews. Had Labor been a lot smarter, rather than focus on some fictional state that can't exist, they could have argued the merits of what's best for the Palestinian Arabs right now and for the future. That way, they wouldn't have alienated a whole raft of potential moderately leftist Jewish voters. As I said, the questions I raised before would be difficult for any decent political party to answer. What this proves now beyond any doubt is that the ALP is no longer a decent political party. This is Alan Friedman for the Australian Jewish Association.